This video is meant for private circulation and internal assessment. The image shown over here is that of the Olympic Stadium in Munich. It was designed by Fry Otto for the 1972 Summer Olympic Games. The canopy of the stadium forms a striking structure which is all weather and rigid. Unlike a cloth tent, what was the idea behind the membrane like roof structure of the Olympic Stadium and what does it have to do with a soap film? In this video, we will be looking at one of the properties of fluids surface tension. In particular, we will be looking at soap films and their property of area minimization. The background video shows the iridescent patterns on a soap bubble film. The soap bubble film will be the object of discussion of this video. Let us consider the origin of tension at a surface. We have two kinds of molecules, the fluid molecule which is at the bulk and the fluid molecule which resides at the interface between the fluid and a gas phase. The gas phase could be something like air. When the molecule is at the bulk, it experiences attraction from other fluid molecules from all the sides. And hence we can say that a fluid molecule in the bulk is in equilibrium. Now if you look at the fluid molecule at the interface between the liquid and the gas, it experiences attraction from fluid molecules in the bulk and therefore it is as if there is a net inward pressure acting on the molecule. Now if we imagine an ensemble of molecules at the interface each of which is experiencing an inward force. The macroscopic manifestation of this would be that the surface is in tension and this is what we interpret as surface tension. And this is quite similar to the elastic membrane of a balloon. The mechanism behind the elasticity is different in both the cases but the manifestation of the physics remains quite similar in nature. In the case of balloon, the elasticity is due to the polymeric nature of the material which comprises the balloon. Whereas in the case of a fluid gas interface, it is the molecular attraction between the molecules in the bulk and at the interface. It is therefore clear that an interface acts as a membrane. We know that when a balloon is deflated, the diameter of the balloon reduces. This is equivalent to the balloon or in this case the rubber membrane trying to reduce its surface area. Can we expect such a similar phenomenon in the case of an interface between the liquid and a gas? In order to answer this question, I have made a frame from aluminium wire so that one of its ends is open. On the open end, I have connected a cotton string across the two sides of the, of the aluminium wire. The string has been attached with yet another piece of string so as to allow me to pull on the string without actually rupturing the soap film. This is what you see in the middle. This entire assembly is dipped in a soap solution so that it forms a soap film suspended between the aluminium frame and the string. I will now pull on the string and we will see some observations. The first observation is that 
even when I'm not pulling on the cotton thread, the shape of the side which comprises of the cotton string is not a straight line. It is in fact a curved surface. It tries to become like a semicircle. And this is a direct consequence of the fact that the soap film is trying to minimize its surface area. It is trying to pull the cotton string inward, thereby causing it to curve inward. Secondly, we observe that once we pull on the string, the soap film area and the moment we let it go, the thread goes back to its topmost location. And once the force is removed, the film is spontaneously trying to go back to its original configuration of minimum area. The act of pulling on the string is equivalent to performing work on the soap film. By performing work on the soap film, we are able to increase the area of the soap film. And hence we can conclude that in order to increase the area of a soap film, work must be performed on the soap film, which means that surface tension is a measure of how much work I need to displace one of the boundaries. Alternately, it is the measure of the increase in energy as the area of the soap film increases. And that is why Minimization of area is also tantamount to minimization of energy of the soap film. Let us look at some typical values of surface tension between fluid air pairs of ethanol, water and surfactant laden water. The surface tension between ethanol and air is 22.2 millinewton per meter while that of water is almost three and a half times that is 72 millinewton per meter meaning we would have to do three and a half times more work in order to increase the area of a film of water as compared to a film of ethanol suspended in air of course however when we mix surfactant in water we are able to reduce the surface tension to 20 to 30 millinewton per meter, which is comparable to that of ethanol air interface. Surface tension can be interpreted as the increase in the energy of the film per increase in area of the film, that is apparent by the unit joule per meter square. And this implies that minimization of area is also tantamount to the minimization of energy of the soap film. And nature likes to go to configurations which have minimum energy. And that explains a lot as to why a film tries to occupy a configuration of minimum area. The question that may come to your mind is, why does a soap film rupture? Now, the surface on its own should not lead to any rupture because it's in a state of tension, everything is in equilibrium. The answer lies in the local thinning of the soap film, which is caused by two effects. The first being evaporation from the soap film to the atmosphere, and the second being drainage of the soap soapy liquid due to gravity because of these two processes in tandem the film may become so thin locally that a small hole appears at that place now much like the bursting of a balloon the hole which has been generated because of these two processes will grow until it collapses to a point and the collapse of the film to a single point is not at all surprising because the soap film has merely tried to minimize its area and the area of a single point is theoretically zero. In order to have soap films which stay 
a long time in the atmosphere we add certain amount of glycerin to minimize evaporation and to increase the viscosity of the liquid so that the drainage is reduced and the evaporation is also mitigated let us also briefly look at the reason why the soap film shows the iridescent patterns on the surface actually the patterns are visible when you shine light at an appropriate angle and look at the soap film at a different angle if you look at the incident light rays there are two mechanisms that can happen the incident light ray can be simply reflected from the interface or the incident light ray can suffer refraction followed by reflection at the back surface now the reflected wave from the back surface arrives at the front surface there might be an interference and the interference depends on the phase that the reflected wave has now depending on the wavelength the interference may be a constructive active interference for a certain wavelength of light or it can be a destructive interference for some other wavelength of light and depending on which wavelength is having a constructive interference that color will appear prominently in that particular band now the phase of the reflected obviously depends on the distance traveled by the refracted and reflected light and this depends on the angle of incidence of the wave and the thickness of the film both these contribute contribute to the time shift between the interference between the incident light and the refracted and reflected light and hence the iridescence is an indicator of the local thickness of the soap film the black spots which appear in the video are regions where the film thins below 50 nanometers and this can be considered as a possible candidate where the first hole in the film may occur and this is the region where the breakage of the film can originate in the video shown there appears to be a net flow from the bottom to the top and this is because the lighting which i have performed in this experiment is from the bottom and the light co causes localized heating of air inside the soap bubble at the bottom this causes air to form a circulation pattern inside the bubble and by virtue of viscous shear it drags the liquid on the soap film which we are able to visualize with the help of the iridescent patterns for it acts as a very potent means of visualizing flow on the surface let us look at the dependency of the shape of the soap film and the difference in pressure between the two surfaces of a soap film if we consider the soap film as shown in the figure it can be broken down into two principal curvatures the first curvature is shown by the radius r1 while the other principal curvature which is orthogonal to the first curvature is shown by r2 and the laplace equation tells us that the excess pressure between the inside and the outside of the interface is equal to 1 over r1 plus 1 over r2 times the surface tension when the pressures are equal we can simply put the left hand side to be zero and that implies that the summation of the curvatures is equal to zero that is 1 over r1 plus 1 over r2 is equal to 0 it is therefore clear that in the case the film does not enclose a certain amount of volume 
meaning that it is exposed to the same pressure on either side of the film the surface thus formed would be such mean curvature has to be zero let us look at some examples of minimum surfaces of films which do not enclose any volume elementary such surface is a plane the plane has minimum area it has zero mean curvature and it is thus a minimum surface a helicoid the helicoid interestingly is the second ruled surface which is also a minimum surface by a ruled surface we mean that the helicoid interface can be made by tracing the locus of a straight line as it is moved through the screw like path along the wire this animation clearly shows how a wire can be bent and when such a wire would be dipped in a soap solution this is the kind of film that we expect and indeed it resembles that kind of a film this particular image i have dipped a wire which is bent in the shape shown in a soap solution and pulled it out and it leads to a stable film which is called as the helicoid the next surface that i want to draw your attention to is called as the catenoid and it is the soap film which is formed between two rings which have their axis parallel now this kind of surface is quite important for us because it shows what the structure of the soap film will be between two bounded surfaces where the soap film is actually not enclosing any volume because note that for the soap film the inside and outside are at the same pressure in this case it is the atmospheric pressure this brings us to the demonstration part of this particular video i have repurposed an old vice that i found in a discarded microscope and attached two aluminium plates to it in the center of the two plates i have drilled a hole of 11 and a half millimeters the rotation of the thimble causes separation between the plates so it allows me to fine tune the gap between the two plates i then immerse the entire aluminium plate assembly in a soap solution and slowly draw out the two plates this is how the video looks like so initially it's it looks like a bridge between the two holes and as the distance increases the diameter in the middle part appears to be reducing and it keeps on reducing until we reach a certain separation after which the film breaks and there are two soap interfaces individually covering the two circles of the two aluminium plates physically this means that the soap film is actually favoring the formation of two surfaces each on the aluminium plate rather than forming a bridge between the two plates now that we've done the experiment can we prove that yes the catenoid is in fact the minimum surface between two rings this we take a small detour into variational calculus 
variational calculus is that branch of calculus in which we are looking for a function which extremizes an integral. In this case, we have an integral of the form j is equal to integral of f, which is a function of x y y prime over dx. So the function f is not known, but with certain constraints, we should be able to figure out what the function would be, which would cause the integral in this case j to have a local minimum or a local maximum. And variational calculus asserts us that the function must satisfy the Euler-Lagrange equation as shown in the video. When the functional f is not a function of f, we can reduce the Euler-Lagrange equation to a simpler form where f minus del f del y prime times dy dx is a constant. Before moving to the application of the Euler-Lagrange equation for finding out the minimum surface between two rings, let us drive home the concept with the help of a simple example that is finding out the shortest path between two points on a plane and we all know from intuition that this will be a straight line. Now I have drawn three curves and when the function is not a straight line, in each case you will have a length which is higher than the straight line connecting the two points. Meaning, if we were to write down the differential length in terms of dy dx as shown in the first step, the length would be then the integral from point 1 to point 2 of square root of 1 plus dy dx whole square. Now, substituting this form of the functional in the Euler-Lagrange equation, we obtain that y prime is equal to a constant. And therefore, y is equal to cx plus b is the equation which has a minimum distance between two specified points. The constants c and b can be found out by imposing the conditions at the two boundaries. Because we have specified the exact location of the points at the two ends. Now let us look at the minimum surface between two bounding rings. Now if we have a slope shape denoted by the white curve in the diagram and if we rotate it along the x-axis, we would obtain the axisymmetric surface. In order to pose the problem mathematically, we assume that the radius of the ring is 1 and the separation between the plates is 2x0 such that the location of the two plates is at minus x0 and plus x0 respectively. The differential area can be written as dA equal to 2 pi y dA. And making the substitution of dS equal to square root of dx square plus dy square and simplifying the entire equation, we obtain an integral for the total area as a over 2 pi is equal to integral of y times square root of 1 plus dy, dy dx whole square times dx. And this integral spans from minus x0 to plus x0. Substituting the form of the functional in the modified Euler-Lagrange equation, we are able to find out the solution for the curve in terms of the constant c1. And the solution is y equal to c1 cos h x over c1. Now if we were to find out the constant c1, we must make use of the constraint at the boundary that at x equal to x0, y is equal to 1. That is, at the extreme point, that is at the surface of the ring, the film must lie on the ring. This is nothing but an interpretation of this fact. So therefore, in order to evaluate the constraint, we have 1 is equal to c1 cos h x0 over c1. 
now depending on the separation we have a transcendental equation for c1 and hence there are two solutions for it which means that given a certain separation i have a possibility for two values the first value lies on the left of the top of the of the dome the top of the dome is called as a critical point because at that critical point we have only one solution for c1 for that particular separation so on the left of the critical point the solution for c1 gives us the deep curve which is shown in the figure on the right if we were to substitute that value of c1 in the equation y is equal to c1 cos h x over c1 we would obtain the blue curve which is a very deep curve if we were to substitute the shallow curve solution meaning the constant c1 obtained on the right side of the critical point we would obtain the green curve and the green curve is shallower than the deep curve now the question is which of these two curves is actually the solution and the answer is the green curve is a curve is actually having the minimum area and this can be found out by actually integrating the curve and finding out the total area i have not done this in the video but all the information is available on the website so it is clear that during the experiment we expect the separation and c1 to follow the shallow curve but what is actually c1 well if we substitute x equal to 0 in the expression for the catenoid we obtain y is equal to c1 so y at the center line will be equal to c1 now let us perform this experiment so here i have processed the image during the experiment i have taken 5 frames and i have evaluated the radius at at different times at the center line and i have also found out the separation between the two plates all using image processing for the image processing i have made use of the open source software called as imagej i have tabulated the points and plotted them and they do appear to be in good agreement with the shallow curve and this is quite striking because what we have obtained from theory does in fact closely match with what we have observed from experiments so now we get back to the question what is the motivation behind the canopy like structures that are seen in various stadiums around the world in fact the canopy like structure is also there in the jawaharlal nehru stadium in new delhi so the mean curvature of a surface which does not enclose any volume is equal to 0 i have marked the two different mean curvatures the negative curvature is plotted in red the positive curvature is plotted in green so the green is the inner curvature while the red is the outer curvature so the entire film tends to remain in tension now whenever we have a soap film which is formed in this way the tension along one direction because of any external force will have to be compensated by an additional tension in the orthogonal direction because that surface always has to satisfy the condition for mean curvature and this is seen in the video where i have taken two rings placed them on the interface and i am pulling them out so the film is quite stable and it makes use of the minimum amount of canvas so in order to cover the same amount of surface area in this case i am trying to cover the surface area of the ring i am able to cover that area with the help of minimum material required because this particular energy minimization business tells me that yes this structure dust formed because of the soap film will try to minimize the area and hence i will achieve 
टेंसाइल स्ट्रक्चर विथ मिनिमम मटेरियल रिक्वायर्ड एज अ पार्ट ऑफ द डेमोस्ट्रेशन विच यू विल डू एट होम यू विल रिपीट द कैटेनॉट एक्सपेरिमेंट फाइंड आउट द टू कर्वेचर्स एंड इवेल्युएट द पॉइंट ऑन दी वन वर्सेस सेपरेशन कर with this we've come to the end of this video i thank you all for watching bye